Hey everyone, welcome back to another Godzilla Battling video, and I'm going to be doing this character review a little bit differently. I'm not going to show you a ton of battles, I'm going to show you one, and we're just going to go through it, and I'm just going to talk about the unit. Uh, because I recorded five different battles, and only when I went to go edit the videos did I realize that my camera, with the built-in microphone, uh, for some reason was turned on, so all of my footage had a crazy echo in it. So instead of re-recording everything, is there's one battle in particular that I thought was exceptional and I really wanted to show it. I'm just going to go through the unit here on the screen and then I'm just going to show you the battle and walk through it and talk about Destroy Adapt and my thoughts about it. So hopefully you guys are okay with that because I really do not want to record another 30, 40 minutes of, of footage again. So Destroy Ariake version. It, should, it actually technically is Destroy Ariake battle version. Whenever there's a, a city here, it usually has battle after it, except for, I believe, Tokyo Godzilla is just Tokyo. But Destroy Ariake Battle Version, or Destroy a Dab for short. So if I say Dab at any point in the video, just D-A-B, I'm talking about Destroy. Or if, in the future as well, if I say Dab, it's most definitely talking about him. He costs five. He's an absolute powerhouse. I've left his little footage right here going for a while. We're going to just take a look at his stats really quickly. We're going to take a look at his introduction, and then we're going to look at the gameplay, okay? So stats. This is at level 19 rented. He's got 3,192 health, 683 attack, plus 4 with the little studio bonus. Haha. <laughs> He's got a 2.4 second attack speed. His search range is 95. Absolutely crazy search range. Target, leader ground, aerial facilities. He can hit everything. His reach is 69. Nice. So he's just shy of hitting outside of leader range. You need to have 71 reach or higher to hit outside of most leader ranges. He is going to be hit by every leader. He's going to get really close, but you got to distract the leaders. His movement speed is 18, so he's on the higher end of movement speed. There's not a ton of characters that with higher than 18 movement speed. I mean, the highest is a 26, but... Uh, maybe like 10 characters maybe have more speed than he does he's really fast this is the point i'm trying to get across now he can inflict a 30 percent taken damage debuff what this means is that enemies will take 30 percent more damage when he inflicts this buff we'll talk about how he inflicts it in a second it lasts for 10 seconds and if there is a ground unit that he is fighting he gets an increased damage to ground units by 20%. I am unsure if this is only when he's using his double slash horn attack, or if it's just in general for his um, uh, oxygen destroyer beam or the horn. I don't know if this applies to both attacks or just the horns, but regardless, he's getting a 20% damage boost to ground units. Let's take a look at his introduction. When attacking, its attack power is boosted by 20% against ground unit targets. See, it doesn't specify either attack, so I'm going to go and assume it's just 20% boost to them in general for all of his attacks. It can perform two success successive attacks when outside of the enemy's search range. It's going to hit him twice. It hits with the horn slash. It does two hits of the horn slash. This means that it will deal two times its attack power as damage to the enemy unit. So, what's his, uh, what was it right here? Stats is 68, 683. Each one of those horn hits is 683. So that's what? Well, it's like 1300 something damage. So that's crazy. That's a lot. And then also if it's a ground character, it's getting a 20% boost on top of that. Ridiculous numbers, actually. Um, where were we here? Enemy units hit by its two successive attacks are then inflicted with an effect that boosts damage taken by 30% for 10 seconds. So the initial hit that will give the damage, the defense down is not going to be able to capitalize on it, but the next time he hits, he will be able to capitalize on this defense down. An offense unit capable of executing powerful preemptive strikes when undetected by enemy units. It is best deployed in conjunction with defensive units to prevent enemy units from engaging with it. Another effective strategy is to use, uh, use it alongside units with the compel effect to keep enemy units from detecting it. Okay, so that is um, Shinden has compel and the new Chibi Mechagodzilla duo. Chibi Mechagodzilla gets to compel when the chibi godzilla character falls to half health chibi mecha godzilla does like a dolphin dive and then he will attract all the enemies around him to the mecha godzilla that is prime time for this destroyer to strike this doesn't also mention stun characters but if you can use characters like gigan final wars or manila or naranga or the emboss for whatever reason 
if you can use the stun characters to retarget aggro from a character off of Destroya or in another direction, Destroya can also capitalize on that. The Compel is the most effective, but if you're not going to use Compel, I think Gargan Final Wars is probably the most effective at this. Because he is going to grab a unit with the stun and then zoom up to them and then take their aggro from them. That is when Destroy is going to be able to hit them with the double slash effect. That is the best use case, I think, for the two of them together. If you're not going to use Final Wars Gigan, you got to use Chibi or the Shinden. All right? So, let's take a look at this gameplay right here. It's against one of the top players. Uh, he placed number, this guy placed number one uh, a few seasons ago. I think in the Kaiser Ghidorah season, it says he placed number one, but he could have also placed it prior to that. You can see my mouse going crazy. That's not actually my... Uh, that's not actually my mouse right now. That's just my mouse when I was talking uh, before when I recorded this with the Echo. So we place our chibis in the water over there. We have our evolutions in the water over there. He has an energy base. He has a, I think that was level 40 destroyer. I don't, I don't quite remember. Base level 30 plus GMK. Big problem as well, but he's using a very expensive deck here. So I have my Mothra. I have Mogera. Mogera is in the middle of the map, so he's also going to be able to shoot the GMK in a second. And then we have Mothra over here. They're going to take down that Destroyer. Now, you saw how that Mechagodzilla hit the Compel on the GMK. That's what we want to use to try to capitalize on Destroyer. So he's throwing the Dimension Tide in to have all of our units in one spot so this Earth can kill them. But the Earth kind of missed out on that. And then Mogera and Chibi Godzilla are going to get a few hits in, but they die instantly. I now have Shinden on the right, Destroy in the middle, Bylante on the left. But the Bylante has also got the damage boost. So you can see that Shinden is going by. My Bylante is hitting the Godzilla. He's cl or she's closer. And then the Destroyer absolutely rinses that Godzilla. Now, if you remember like 10 seconds ago when we were looking at the stats, my Destroyer dab is only level 19. That was a level 40 Godzilla Earth. We folded him like an omelet. With this destroyer. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing sweep right there. The Shinden distracted the, the Earth. Then the Biolante distracted the Earth. And it gave our destroyer plenty of time. Plenty of time to work through that health bar. That is what is so good about this destroyer. Okay? He puts a ton of the best units in the game. Especially a ton of the best ground units in the game. To absolute shame. As long as you can keep them off a of destroyer, you're going to have a good time. So there, he's using Gigan and destroyer. But he does, at this entire time, this player does not use Gigan to pull aggro from someone off of his destroyer dab. He basically just uses Gigan to stop units from moving so Earth can capitalize. But you can see right here, look, he played the Dimension Tide. All the units are in the middle. Shinden's going up. This Earth is focused on the Shinden, and Destroyer can move in. He's doing the 20% damage boost to his attack on the ground unit, and he's putting the defense down on them, and he is with the, the two hits, and the Bailante is there. Done. Godzilla Earth. Kaput. Done. Love that. There's his other... There's a level 30 plus Destroyer. There is the GMK. I'm pretty sure the GMK... Uh, the, so the GMK totally just dies there, which I, I don't even know how that happened. But look, now our Destroyer Dab is hitting his Destroyer regular, totally nukes it. The Destroyer Dab has like one health left, but it doesn't matter. Look, that Gigan, done. The Destroyer Larvas kill him. That's totally fine. We have our guys up here in the front. Fantastic. By Lanta on the left. Destroy Dab on the right. He's going to have to make a choice on where he wants to go. He decides to spend the 9 energy to fight the Destroyer. That's fine. Our Destroyer is not there yet. It's in the water, so we can use that to our advantage. It's slowed down. Shinden up on the right side. Look at that. Look where I'm pointing the mouse. Shinden's going to hit the Compel on the Earth. I think he moves the Earth. No, destroy it or, uh, or destroy it. That's fine. Because I think we. I think any way I use it to, I use it to kill him, so... He puts his energy base right there. Strange to me that he would do that. Minus one's there. A whole bunch of damage flies out. We're a little bit behind on energy. You can't see. I have it cut out for whatever reason, but that's fine. We have our Chibis. We have Mothra. Because I know he's going to try to kill them with AoEs or the Earth. So then we put Shinden right there. Destroya also right there. Destroya's going to take a hit, I believe, from this Earth. But the, the Shinden is compelling them all. It's moving them. It's moving them. And then we die again. But we have Mothra over here hitting the Earth. Minus one behind him. And I'm pretty sure minus one kills the Earth. That Destroyer does get the distraction hits off. But then it uh, minus one moves into close quarters and is able to put him to shame. So like, look at look at the difference with that Destroyer. I didn't kill him with my minus one. But 
when he wasn't doing the double hit, he did significantly less damage, only hitting him once, not, not hitting him twice, not afflicting a defense down, none of that. So that's big. That's big right there. So buying Lante over here, going to wipe up some of these targets, and then we just pop the leader ability, and it's over. <sighs> so what did we learn from this exercise, kids? Destroy a nab. Absolute monster. Absolute powerhouse. When enemies are not looking at him when he is not engaged in a 1v1 if the target he is attacking is also attacking him and they're within range of each other or within search range it's not going to be good you want to make use of the compels you want to make use of the shindens you need to be using your units as a distraction the dab destroyer is one of the best units that we've ever gotten in the game However, he is not as plug-and-play reliable as something like Thousand Year Dragon Ghidorah or Minus One, who are also some of the best characters we've gotten in a really long time. With Destroy a Dab, you really got to focus on your team composition and how you play your units. There is a bar that separates good Battleline players from bad Battleline players. Destroy a Dab, really, it takes a little bit more knowledge than your average character to play him. That's not saying a whole lot, right? Because a lot of the characters in this game are just set them and forget them. If you really want to make the most effective use of Destroy a Dab, you got to make sure you are hitting those distractions, you're hitting those stuns. You have Destroy a... Destroy is really fast. You got to make sure he's not going ahead of your push. You got to use like, the water to your advantage. Try blocking him with other characters or have him push a character. Like, you really, you really, really have to try to get, to, like, get the most out of him. You, you gotta squeeze that orange for everything it's worth. You gotta make sure, you gotta make sure that juice is worth the squeeze. Because he's really good. But if you do not play him right, and he's just doing, hitting his single target attack, he's not applying that defense down, he's not hitting double damage, he's, he's gonna fold like an omelet. He is getting the damage boost to ground units, but he's not getting any of the other benefits. He's going to fold like an omelet. Your enemies are going to run through him like a hot knife through butter. I don't know how many other analogies I need to be making to say that he is absolute dog water if the enemies are focused on him. If you can keep the enemies distracted and off of his back, he is by no means terrible. He is far and away one of the best characters we currently have in Godzilla Battleline. Okay? Make sure to play him smart. Use him effectively. He's in the battle pass. You'll get two pieces of him. You get one piece for free at level 50. He's a phenomenal unit. You just got to use a little bit of brain power. I know it's asking a lot from battle line players. I know. I know how we operate. He is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of Destroya. I'm a huge fan of this character. Got my seal of approval. He's a lot more complex than a lot of the other characters. But it's super worth it once you get that mastery down. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. And I will catch you. On the next one, bye-bye.